But one of the things that we did is we took, I believe it was a 32 channel EMG, and we would hook it up all along the spine and, and many different muscles all over the body. And then we would do things like visualize that you're climbing stairs. And the person would just even be sitting in a chair, but usually just standing. And you can actually watch all the muscles that are used to climb stairs turn on. And say, so you visualize yourself throwing a ball and you can actually see all those muscles turn on. So the visual centers actually prime the motor system. jump forward in their list of questions because you're a big guy on affirmations and supercharging affirmations and I think because so many of these story gaps root back to issues of insecurity I find that an affirmation used properly can really help bring a person into the right mental framework to perceive themselves in ways that not only it's not just perceiving yourself as capable but it is part of a process of being capable of doing the necessary work to prepare yourself and develop yourself because if a person just shows up on stage let's say and they've got an affirmation I'm really really good I'm really really good I'm really really good but they're really really not then that's just an affirmation that's like bullshitting themselves and they might get laughed out again so maybe you can share how do you feel affirmations can be used not only for a story gap but any other application you'd like to share sure affirmations are fantastic and um, to supercharge them okay which is what we call it it's a very simple process and it's very rarely done, which is affirmations. Most people that use them have written, have them written down. <clears throat> and you, you highlighted the problem a moment ago when you said, I'm really, really good. I'm really, really good. I'm really, really good. You know what the problem there is, Paul? You don't believe it. <laughs> and the reason that a part of them doesn't believe it or a majority of them doesn't believe it, even though they want to believe it, is because of how fast they're doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really good. I'm really, really good. I'm really, really good. Take your affirmations, folks, and do one more thing with them. Stop in between each affirmation and take a big breath in mm -hmm. and a big breath out. Because mm -hmm. look at, look at, the, and again, this goes to the mechanics of storytelling. Most people, they're using an affirmation because they want to believe in that more strongly, which uh, uh, also says that part of them doesn't believe that. Yeah. Okay. And so the part of them that is at odds with them believing that and becoming the person that is really, really good or whatever the affirmation is, is going to be in a stress state about it. Yeah. And the breath is going to be trapped in the chest. And then I repeat it too fast. I'm really, really good. I'm really, really good. I'm really, really good. And the whole thing, it just, it's a head job. It just remains mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do when you supercharge an affirmation, like I just said, you stop and you can, let's say you have a list of 10 different affirmations. It will work with those, or you can pick one and rep that. Mm -hmm. You stop. And when you get the breath in between each sentence, it's known as socializing the idea, embodying the concept, or taking it to heart. And what you want to do with the affirmations that you want to bring on board and bring to life and have expand that architect mentality, you want to work with them with your breath, very important, until it's a matter of fact, mm -hmm. until you feel it. It's a matter of fact, because when the breath gets involved, it turns into, you bring the whole part of your being. You, it, you, you literally get it into your, you, 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 you generate the feeling that's connected to knowing and believing that statement. And then once it's matter of fact, once you've repped it enough to where it's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm really, really good. Move on. You're good. You're good. That right there, we, I had a Facebook group for almost a year where we did a live uh, class once a week, 
it was called supercharge your affirmations. And that's all we would do is get them to write it down and make sure folks it's, um, the affirmation is practical as in you can practice repeating it easily. You've seen this. How many times have you seen somebody with an affirmation that's basically a small paragraph and there's 19 different things in it? It's too confusing. You want to simplify and clarify, distill the thing down to a very practical, short and sweet sentence and then rep it with your good breathing Mm -hmm. and watch what happens. I also think that an affirmation can be supercharged to use your term when it's coupled with visualization. So instead of just saying, I'm really, really good at public speaking, as you're saying it, see yourself standing on stage, being confident in yourself, delivering well. Because I think that when you take it from pure audio content into video or visual, you're activating more neurons. You're, you're getting more neural association because you're activating the visual system, not just the linguistic centers of the brain. And, you know, when I was doing uh, EMG training, I I did uh, a very comprehensive course in EMG training many years ago when I was really doing a lot of hardcore rehab because I had all these patients with, you know, serious injuries and and, uh, muscles that weren't working and discs that were compressing nerves. So I had to do a lot of EMG assessment. But one of the things that we did is we took, I believe it was a 32-channel EMG, and we would hook it up all along the spine and and many different muscles all over the body. And then we would do things like visualize that you're climbing stairs. And the person would just even be sitting in a chair, but usually just standing. And you can actually watch all the muscles that are used to climb stairs turn on and say, uh, visualize yourself throwing a ball. And you can actually see all those muscles turn on. So the visual centers actually prime the motor system. Um, An interesting story I'll share with you. I I was reading a biography. I I think the guy's name was Dennis Coffey. And he was an officer in Vietnam. And he got captured by the Vietnamese. Vietnamese, And he was was in prison and tortured almost daily for seven years. And he talked about one of the ways that he survived it was he was a lover of golf and he would go play golf on uh, in an, um, and he would just go to all of his favorite golf courses in his mind and play golf and when he got home after he got released from the prisoner of war camp and went home he went to play his first golf game in in by that time eight years and on his first game he had improved his game golf game by 10 strokes which really shocked him but the only explanation was he had been playing golf for for eight years in prison and so it shows how activating the visual centers actually entrains the motor centers and most people wouldn't visualize themselves playing a shitty game they would say ah look i got a hole in one or you know look at i i won the game you know so i i I just went in my own life i I try to maximize all the neural pathways by using each of the possibilities. So if you, I just think visualization whenever possible, um, coupled with your techniques, I think can really take a person a long way because if you prime the system, it can't tell the difference between practicing with the golf club in your hand and practicing with it in the mind hand. Yeah, we have some fun like ways of the language influences our imagination is the core of that so the the way that we can use the words another layer of supercharging the affirmations is past tense them yes like like, it's like it already did it It, we already happened and uh it was great we crushed it you know we uh putting the putting it into the achievement phase and what what is great about the system of including the breath is the breath allows the space. I would I would guess that most people consciously or unconsciously in that breath are doing the visualization of what it is that that affirmation means to them. Yeah, it could because be. it's so slow that you feel and you see mm-hmm. what it is that you're declaring. Yeah, good. The breath will... It's the feeling and the visual. The inclusion of the breath with affirmation will detail the mental imagery. 
Yeah. Because it's more believable. It's easier to see. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm really, really good. I'm really, really good. I'm really, really good with big eyeballs, like, all puckered up. That's going to be hard for me to see that in my imagination. Well, not only that, the movie's running so fast. It's, exactly. it's just a blur. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 